So, exciting. Hello there. Um, so this session will be about Drupal theming with Twig and SAS, and actually I want to show you how to do a grunt setup, a node setup, and for this I really need to know who's in the room. Who of you ever used SAS before? So, like everybody. Oh, wonderful. I don't have to explain that much to you because so I can go over a little bit more quickly. Otherwise, I would have like uh, stayed on some certain topics a little bit longer. Who of you uses Node, Grunt, Gulp or something like as a workflow? Wonderful. Actually, with you guys, uh, afterwards, I really would like to discuss if uh, Drupal 8 would be able to use, finally, SAS in their maybe core or something like, so if there's something somebody up for. And um, one last question. So we, we will see how far we get. Actually, um, as you can see uh, this slide, I, I'm going to do some very bad thing. I will try to do some live coding. And uh, actually, the whole talk is on GitHub, so you will find this very link down there uh, over my shoulder. Uh, you can follow it. I try to do some very good notes that you can follow along. Even if it doesn't work, it should kind of work afterwards. And what I'm about to do is programmatically theme Drupal. So actually, um, I don't want to show the backend wh where I do the uh, views, uh, view what I click in the views and so on, but I rather, rather show you what we achieve with Twig and SaaS and so on. So, okay, let's start. Um, me, myself, hi, I'm Tassilo. Um, I work at Wanderers, uh, situated in Basel in Switzerland. Uh, originally, I'm from Germany. I uh, would consider myself as a full-stack developer. I try to be a clean coder, if anybody of you knows what this is. No? Writing clean, co clean code, that's important. And yeah, so what we want to do today is, first of all, uh, let's say we have a little story. So we want to create a new theme. Uh, this theme should have a nice faf icon. So everybody of you knows what the faf icon is, of course, right? Um, actually, there's a very nice page I want to show you what you can do actually with all those possibilities the browser give you, but it's become more and more complex. Then uh, our step one would be to do a little uh, SAS setup uh, for Grunt. And um, so that we have this working, the, um, the project manager says, okay, we want to have a very nice header, we want to have on our first page, page a slider, and uh, we're going to just follow along these kind of topics. And by that, uh, I would like to point out some points we use in our daily work, and we try to adhere some best practice we found so far in using it. And it would be nice if somebody could watch the door. It, I know it's in, in, in every session like that, but um, okay. So let's start. Everybody of you knows what a faf icon is, right? But I have to, uh, I can't use. Um, but actually, there is so much to it that there is a dedicated page called the real faf icon generated. Anybody of you knows that page? You're doing it right. And, and actually, in preparing this, uh, this very talk, I learned something new because you really have to go every time back there to create your uh, own FAF icon. Actually, our designer does this. And he always uh, realized some new uh, functionalities there. And uh, the thing is, it's not only the FAF icon.ico anymore, it is, let's go through it. Um, you have the FAF icon for iOS. Actually, ah, yeah, we have, this is our demo picture uh, image, and you can use the original FAF icon. You can, oh, that's very, oh, I tried to do it a little bit more, zoom out. That should be, is it, is it visible for you, so everybody, yeah? Um, you can actually go and say, okay, give it a different background color. I want to add a different size. You can actually uh, give it always a dedicated picture for every FAF icon you give. So that was iOS. Not that complicated. Okay, you can do the very same thing for Android Chrome as well. You can say, okay, give it a plain background and then scale it, please. Give it another color. Okay, wonderful. Actually, I have to give it a name uh, for my app. My app. And then, okay, I can give it a theme color, but wait, I just did it. Uh, actually, if you are on Android and all you Apple user, please, sorry, you can do this. But it's actually very cool what you can do since you are able to theme the very top bar of an Android, uh, uh, Android 
tab, you can give it another color too. We always do this to uh, give it the very theme color. Actually, if you go to our back uh, to our website, you will see that every page has a different theme color, so we switch the theme color as well. And on Android, you can also give this option that you want to have a lookalike standalone application. As you can maybe see, uh, the browser bar the URL where you put in the URL can uh, be um, removed. And then you can also force the screen orientation to be landscape or uh, portrait. Um, I haven't used this before. Please rather don't do this because pe people use, your phone, uh, use their phones in every direction. And OK, that was Chrome. And then we have Safari. Safari introduced, I don't know, like half a year ago, half a year ago, uh, this uh, pinned tab thing where you have your very icon be rather monochrome. Uh, you can give it a uh, just, uh, just a letter. And you can, of course, uh, there you can uh, set a different uh, area of your image if it has certain colors and so on uh, to be um, transparent. You can, of course, give it a dedicated picture and you can, of course, give it a different color. So, I, I hopefully I'm not going too far, uh, too fast because actually I want to cover a lot, lots of things. So, that's okay for you for the speed? Yes, everybody's nodding. Good. And actually, in the end, you can even say if you really plan to uh, put it into your source to uh, give it a certain version and so on. So if you have an uh, update on your server, the, uh, the cache will kick in. You can go and save, uh, say, I want to compress my image, what you sh should, should normally do. You can use the original image. And for this one, you can even have a closer look if it's working, yeah. Uh, uh, and compare the original image with the compressed one. And in this case, we can go up to a compression rate, I think, to actually uh, seven, uh, 76%. That's quite big. And then I, you hit generate FAF icons and the HTML code. What you will get is actually a snippet. I don't want to hit it because I will have, and that, that will take some time and processing. And actually, I'm not quite sure about the Wi Fi at the moment. Um, so you will get a, a very nice snippet as well as a big folder containing all of the FAF icons. So originally, we had this. Favicon.ico. Uh, and now we have all this Apple Touch, uh, Android Chrome. We even have our browser config for Microsoft uh, applications. Please bear in mind that you probably have to adjust here the paths as well. You have a manifest JSON file where your theme, uh, your, your application name is si situated, where all the um, other files are re referenced. You even can generate an SVG file for better responsiveness. Wow, we've came a long way. And actually, how to include this? Um, actually, we use uh, the very same uh, terminology we uh, would use in, in, in other projects. So here I have my custom theme called Thematic. And thematic, there we have our includes. We put all the files we, that are just little snippets with an underscore coming from SAS and other, uh, other languages. That's kind of uh, the thing we do for and have a look at this one. And now we can see that this very snippet gets uh, generated from the FAF icon generator. But actually, we have to adjust a little bit to go for uh, to 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 reference our pictures correctly. Uh, correctly. So um, the very first variable I found uh, well, well not very good documented is the directory variable. Who of you knows this variable? Ah, wonderful. Ah. Uh, learning number one, if you're on HTML, HTML twig level, so not very in your note, note level, but in the very HTML level, uh, you will have the directory uh, variable pointing di directly to your theme folder. In this case, as you can see, uh, the theme folder is uh, themes custom thematic. It does not include the templates folder. Therefore, we have another allies. And so, coming back, um, I use, just use this and replace the href uh, beginning with this path variable at every, pa uh, every place I need it. And then actually, as you, uh, as you saw, I was able to put actual different colors in there uh, for every different uh, situation. You could do this and you can also do 
it was the easy way for me to show you. Set a default color and then say, uh, save it to a mask icon, tile color and theme color, and then just add it there where you need it. So normally you probably would have the very same color, maybe it differs, I don't know. Um, then you can also reuse in another project this very snippet of the fav icon. Um, we always do this, but please bear in mind, as I just said, the uh, browser config XML file. We also we already had this uh, situation where I just copied that, and unfortunately, I forgot about the color. So the header in Android, nobody really saw it since nobody saw uh, this very page in Android. And I was wondering, right, why why is the header red? Is there an HTTPS error? No, no, it was the theme color defined by an, in a prior project. Please bear this one in mind. And then we actually just go to the HTML, uh, HTML file. It's situated in our theme, um, uh, theme folder. And then we just include this one uh, closely to the end of the very head. Here we have this... Um, Elias, I was talking about who of you knows this one. Uh, this one that should be okay. So if you are in a theme, uh, you can always use this kind of Elias. So bear in mind, I just edit the theme thematic, and everywhere, also in your notes, also in your blogs, and so on. If you need to uh, reference Twig templates uh, within each other, then this very allies, as you can see, I don't put the templates folder in there as a path, will directly point to theme custom thematic templates. So that's on the back end side. And the directory variable I just um, mentioned, it's on the front end, front end side. And if we have a look at the very result, which I have here, for example, and if we have a look at the header, we will see that uh, whoop, 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 whoop. we've got all these nice includes. We've got this theme, custom thematic, fav icons, path, set, and everything's fine. So, and by the way, if you have any uh, any qu questions, and uh, now my language is gone, uh, please raise your hand. I'm gonna go through this very quickly, and I would like I have lots of stuff. Maybe in the end uh, we will go through this, but if you don't say halt, I would just. Go on forth. Okay, so actually, if I uh, look into the, uh, the head of the browser, I will see this very nice icon, and I can be sure that this is the uh, correct syntax for all the fav icons I can do. Okay, um, now the themer, as well as the customer, says, "Okay, that's our boring uh, new theme. Uh, we need to have the header pop and." Just to uh, just as a quick reminder, we need to have the header pop. There should be something moving, and then we have our very articles, and those articles should be a slider. So we were not able to convince our designer to drop the slider. Okay, we want to have the slider. The slider should pop as well. Okay, and to do this, I actually need to set up Grunt somehow. And to set up Grunt, you only need like two files, which I. Pr uh, conveniently prepared so far. You need a package JSON file uh, which defines all your dependencies. It's just like Composer. Everybody of you knows Composer, should know Composer so far. Uh, see some nodding heads. Okay, actually, this is the Composer for uh, Node. And actually, you can see a lot of things being uh, um, imported here or used here. You will end up, uh, if you just type node install, with the node modules folder, which contains all the applications you need. Of course, you exclude this node, uh, node modules folder from your Git repository, and you're good to go. Uh, so for your local development, you use this one. And uh, you can go and use Gulp, you can use Grunt, uh, you can even use uh, NPM Pure itself, which is there, but um, you will have a look. We probably won't have a look at this one. And then you have a definition file called Grunt uh, File.js. This Grunt file consists uh, merely of lots of configuration. The big difference between Grunt and Gulp is Grunt's configuration. Uh, Gulp is more prog uh, programming. Actually, I tend to like Grunt more because uh, it's, for me, easier to see what is doing here. In Gulp, you really have to understand what's going on there, and it's kind of clumsy. So. But anyhow, so um, now you go and say, okay, I've got these two tasks using uh, saying SAS and PostCSS. Who of you knows PostCSS? 
Wow. Okay. Who of you know SAS? Uh, no, I asked SAS. Okay, thank you. PostCSS is kind of the new kid on, on the block. Uh, it was kind of originated last year, I believe. And it also tries to kind of kick off SAS. But actually, since PostCSS is uh, con more consisting of very different um, modules, which you can kind of use to re um, reproduce SAS, um, it's kind of hard to understand. You have to know which modules are in, uh, act activated. So, mm. actually, we use post CSS to uh, post CSS to actually auto prefix and to minify all our contents. And but before that, we use simply SAS to uh, use our SAS files. So, since SAS is a defined language, um, it also uses the Ruby implementation, which I don't uh, recommend to use. Uh, this one uses the libsas implementation, which is quite fast. And after that, we can have a nice nested uh, CSS file. We can also check this. It's very important if you use any kind of pre-processing uh, or post-processing uh, languages or uh, helper that you know what you're doing. Actually, um, there's this inception rule in SAS. Anybody of, everybody of you knows what's the inception rule in SAS? Don't nest deeper uh, than like three. Than three. Everybody of you knows the film inception with Leonardo DiCaprio. No, this wonderful film. It was a blockbuster. He nearly got an Oscar for this. Please, one more nod. Uh, thank you. Well, this one. Yeah, this one is cool. <laughs> And um, you, you tend uh, to do the very same thing in SAS as well. You can nest very deeply, but you will end up with very big and ugly uh, CSS code. So that's a problem. So make sure that um, I can show it last, uh, afterwards, since there is actually nothing there at the moment. Um, that you can uh, actually put a lot of things in your CSS file, and you end up with a big file, and you don't want that. So and. The last thing we have to have a look at in the grunt file is actually the very bottom. And so the very bottom defines our task we are able to run. And the very default task says, OK, please run my CSS task, which co merely consists of post CSS and SAS. Uh, uh, in the, after that, ugly file or my JavaScript file. Uh, we will come to this later. Uh, we will use browser sync and then we just watch everything that happens. So I have here my. Uh, Grunt running. Grunt is, uh, I just started Grunt, so it was a SAS processing uh, post CSS. Then it uglifies my JavaScript. Um, there was not much happening. And now Browser Sync is uh, listening on this very local host. And so this um, Browser Sync is actually proxying my Drupal site at this point. And then it's watching the site. Why, I do, why do I need this uh, um, Browser Sync? Actually, it's quite cool for. For two reasons, thank you. If I change something, um, it will automatically update. Actually, um, on my CSS, it won't work at the moment because I have a problem with my CSS files in the head. Afterwards, somebody please explain me why. Drupal is doing this. I hadn't figured it out. All my other sites are not doing this. And the very second thing is, if you really want to know what your every media query is doing, actually, on this very small theme uh, screen, it's not working. That much, but actually, I have two different browsers, and this one is slightly larger. You know, the Baltic theme has this responsive thing. So, if I scroll down, you see that the very uh, browser in the background scrolls with me. And even if I try to open the uh, menu, you will see that the menu uh, is so the JavaScript click is also the click is also converted. And if I go to the next page, uh, in the background, the, the other uh, page is also refreshed. This can be very helpful if you really need to look at different um, media queries you are created and have a, have a look around there. And if you are uh, expensive enough, you have like different screens and so on. And that's one very cool thing. And normally you would kind of update the content, so you can easily go. Um, let's have a look at our browser sync uh, definition here. You can say, please watch those files. Please watch into my CSS folder. If the min CSS changes, update, uh, update it. If the min JavaScript uh, uh, changes, update it. If I have something like an asset folder uh, and there's changes something, update it. And even, and that's the very 
easiest thing, but I, it took me some time to get on it. If I change something in my Twig files, please reload the page because I was also hitting uh, refresh on my Twig files. You don't need to do this anymore. And actually, there's a very nice third thing coming up because um, normally you would uh, be logged in and you probably have to change something when you're on your actual site. It's very nice to have if there's something different on your actual site when you're not logged in. So actually, I have my local host here where I'm not logged in. There's also different routes sometimes, so sometimes some pictures are not showing, but that's not, prob not a problem. So if I have something in the back end, I'm using the back end and actually don't want to be log in and log out, out again, have a different uh, browser or so, I can use these very two tabs to actually have the very same page being logged in and logged out again. So th three nice reasons. So, uh, okay. And now what, what we said, we wanted to have the header a little bit more moving. Okay, let's go do this. Actually, um, what we do is, of course, we have a SAS folder. By the way, uh, if you have a SAS folder, if you have a SVG, SVG source folder, if you have a JavaScript source folder, please bear in mind uh, to always HD access your folders. So. Um, if you use SAS, you can also always uh, produce a uh, map file. This map file will always show you where the sources are. And if the path, paths or even the file names are correct, you will be able to watch in, even from the live site to go to this very SAS folder and have a look at it. So if you go and, for example, use a style guide or some other information, even in your JavaScript files, you don't always want people to watch at, at your very sources. So please bear in mind, it's just a copy of a, a HDXS file from um, Drupal itself. So only on uh, localhost we will see those files and it's working even if you're working on localhost. So if you use a map file, it will show you the right way. So as I wanted to continue, You've got this very SAS folder. There you have your styles SCSS file, and this very styles SCSS file is fetching every information, uh, every sub uh, uh, folder, and every sub CSS file, SCSS file that's needed. In this case, I wanted to play with the layout of the header, so I want to use uh, this class here. This class only consists of like one definition for the very header, and I give it a linear gradient and try to animate the background. And if I want to animate background, I also have some keyframes prepared here. And this is something you normally do in SAS. You kind of have your major helper functions, major helper classes you try to include. And um, e even if, you, if we have a look at the very uh, first lines here, we have our function colors file, actually those Files will get generate no output put as we just saw. So our cl colors in this case are like black, white, and most importantly, primary color, secondary color for the link and so on. But uh, we wanted to have the header of the background, uh, the background of the header, a little bit more spotting. And actually, while I was talking, the uh, yes, grunt registered something uh, changed in my files and if I go back and this time really have to unfortunately I have to refresh at this point um, now we will see okay we have our background if we take pay close attention and I don't know if the uh, beamer is showing this uh, it always it also gives us a little transition there so that was nice but actually um, it's only color we need to have some kind of texture so the uh, design uh, guy says oh we need to have the texture and know what's up the hexagon we need a hexagon of course <sighs> okay so uh, on this very uh, moving background we want to have a kind of the idea of a hexagon so he comes and gives you this very SVG file saying okay uh, I just imp exported this for my uh, uh, Adobe Illustrator and actually he did kind of good job and on this one. He, it's not that cluttered and he, you see a footer, pe footer pattern, oh, okay, wrong name anyhow, but we've got a nice polygon and this should work. How do I get this into my CSS? Uh, how do I get this in the background or even the foreground of the coloring and the background of the inner uh, diff? 
No, that's not the bigger problem since we're using SAS. The only thing we have to do is take this one, compromise it, uh, compress it, and after we've compressed it, uh, get away of other comments in the uh, SVG files and so on, we need to escape everything. For this, fortunately, Grunt has a very nice task, and this is actually, as I just described, a whoa. Just get a whoa. No, get away. Uh, this one I don't need. Don't need this one. Yes. Uh, actually, there are two tasks I just was talking about. So uh, we first has to have to minify, minify our, all our SVG files. And in this case, we say, OK, go for my backgrounds folder, put it in a disk folder, uh, remove the view box, and you remove useless strokes and maybe uh, some parts that are displayed on. So, And then in the second step, we use this uh, SVG CSS task that is using a nice little uh, handlebars uh, 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 template for to generate us our nice SCSS file. What I mean by that. So the result, I just jump over to this, should be a list of variables and those variables will include just the, as I just said, the escaped SS VG file. And how do I achieve this? Uh, I use the template I just mentioned with simple handlebars, and that's not that complicated. So I dollar sign, I give it the name uh, of the very file I just used, and then, then I use the data URI just in quotes and repeat this over and over again. Yeah. Any questions about that? No. Well, it's kind of understandable, right? And then, finally, I have to use this. So if I go over to my um, styles SCSS file, I can insert or import this very background. So all of those uh, images, all of those variables are suddenly available. And then I can go back to my layouts file and say, OK, this very inner first section, that should be kind of transparent. But in the background pattern, it should be centered and repeated and back have a background size. And now that I saved one more time, probably my yes should be working. And if I refresh this one, now we have a bigger header, we have a kind of structure, and still we have something moving in the background so far. Huh? And OK, questions about that? Good. Mm -hmm. No. Um, actually, I have like oh, some time left. Now we are talking about this very nice list of articles here. Um, normally I want to click an article, I have the big uh, uh, big area I'm able to click and I wanted to make it pop and look, li look like the rest as well. So actually um, just jump over here and say okay as we just saw, I need to have my notes ready, and in notes I just defined any anything I need for my article teaser view. Um, actually, what I did is I kind of updated the, or I imported, of course, uh, in contents, my article teaser, teaser. And if we have a look at this one, I just use the note bundle class name, and then I if I have the view mode, just put the note, uh, note bundle name dash dash in the view mode. So I end up with article teaser, article default, article whatever, RSS what I define. And then I just put it all in there and yeah, nothing fancy here. And if we go back to uh, this very uh, field here, we will see, okay, I put the hexagon background pattern there as well, uh, use a primary link color, uh, give it a nice hover and an active state, please, 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 always remember there is an active state and please, please remember there's always a focused uh, state. That's a very, very, very important usability issue. If you hover something, it doesn't react, it does not react, uh, even on mobile, it's very important uh, since the latency is maybe uh, so big. So I just included this, gave it another um, uh, font family, and I think that should be working so far. Uh, let me just jump back and check. Uh, bup, bup, bup. I can enable these buttons as well. And yeah, we should be good to go. And if we have in the background is running, we would see, yes, very big, nice issues here. I can click them, and now we see, okay demo data. Actually, and this should be sliding. 
somehow. Uh, I don't make it so very fancy, but uh, I want to show something very specific here. So every, e uh, every item of this is now fully styled. So if I only had one uh, article here, this one article, even in the slider, would, like, would look like this. So, and that's something very important. I will come to it later. So first of all, let's include our JavaScript files. Uh, so let's head over to our grunt file and see that we have this uglyfy task here. This uglyfy task, actually, I really like it because it has this very option. Screw IE8. And unfortunately, we still have to do this. I don't know why. <laughs> And um, what this very task does is to take all of your JavaScript files you have and put it together and minify it. There should be also possibilities, even with SAS, there are possibilities to say, okay, go here, that's my SAS folder, go here, that's my JavaScript folder, take everything that's in there, uh, put it together, uh, maybe by name, I don't know, and ship it. That's something we really don't like to do because actually, uh, since we are on, uh, since we are using one script file, uh, since we are using one uh, CSS file, uh, the, uh, the 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 order of the uh, of the includes are very important. Even though you probably end up in doing something like this with all of your files and end up having a very app.js or styles.js file on the, at, the, at the bottom, it's very it's still for us best practice to do because uh, every new developer can go there and say, okay, that's the very order everything is being included and he does not have to worry about because uh, in CSS we always had, a, uh, we took another project, the project used this uh, folder thingy, just doing everything and then we were wondering why is this not working? Ah, because uh, we just include the slider and the slider has something to do with the views and the views were not responding to this because the slider was coming before and after and so on and that was not really working. So always remember to keep the order as it would fit for you. That being said, okay, uh, I changed it and I also have to head over to actually uh, uh, my uh, JavaScript file to update this one and uh, my JavaScript file at this point. Are, are you familiar with the OWL carousel? So that's a very nice tool to a slider. It still, re um, still relies on jQuery but uh, it's very nice. And uh, there are two reasons, uh, two reasons which uh, choose it. Uh, so, so the first reason is very nice to, 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 uh, to implement. And the second reason is it uses also, uh, in the, for comp compiling their own styles, uses SAS as well. So if I go back to my um, styles SCSS file, I have the possibility to uh, take the very, whoops, uh, vendor files of the our carousel and take the theme and I can only use the core if I would like to at this point it doesn't matter to me I just uh, include the very carousel uh, file and then we will see what happens next so actually I don't see anything and if the yes wonderful and what well, looks nice um, but actually something something weird is happening do you do you realize what's what's happening here uh, no, this is refreshing I am doing. So I'm refreshing the page <laughs> and I'm refreshing the page without the cache. And if I would go to our very company uh, uh, page, or sorry, um, so, what, what, what's happening here? So actually, this one is very nice. If I zoom out, probably, yes, that's better. So there should be some movements, but actually, on the very left, uh, well, that's your right. Uh, on the very right, you see the buttons not having a text so far. The buttons itself are jumping in the height. Uh, I see the logo on the very right, but then it uh, disappears. Um, so the 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 um, the menu, okay, is gonna be uh, presented uh, as intended, but the very logo itself is jumping around. Actually, who of you knows what's happening here? Well, I don't know if there's a term, but.
actually, um, yes, it's not the sorting. It's one big issue we really have to think about. Who of you has your JavaScript disabled? Actually, everybody of you. You don't know? Everybody has JavaScript. Ah, sorry, I have to open this one, make it very small, so this disabling is working. You see something else? Yeah, it's still working, but uh, it jumps around as well. Everybody of you has your JavaScript not enabled until it's loaded. So until the JavaScript, at normally at the very bottom of the page, is fully processed, adding all the classes to animate your stuff, to uh, uh, decide whether it's a mobile menu or if it's a, a desktop menu, will not be started, will not be triggered until it's not loaded. So please bear in mind, and that's the very thing we have here. Um, so I break it just down. Uh, actually, if you use Carousel, uh, all the uh, styles in Carousel, it will go, and if JavaScript is not enabled, all the Carousel, uh, all the, 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 the containers having the class our Carousel will be displayed none. So until the JavaScript um, and the very class I will load it is added, you won't see anything. So if I go back and maybe do this very same thing here, whoops, nope, same thing here, and disable my JavaScript, reload, I see and don't see anything. First thing you have to do is, of course, make your own styles but display block. I have to override the, uh, the custom code of uh, our carousel, but uh, that's the very um, the same thing you had to do, for example, for this uh, very um, page uh, we were just looking at. So display anything as if there was no JavaScript present at the moment. So, and we will head over to this and, wonderful. Okay, we see anything, okay, once again, another problem. We see all of them. So that's the basic problem of all sliders, and we have like last five projects, we still have the same problems, even though I was talking to the designer or the, the actual uh, CSS guy, please watch this one. So, um, and if I enable the JavaScript once again and close this tab, you will see, you will see, you will see, that's still jumping. And the very... And that's the second reason I really like our cursor because it normally takes a, uh, un an unordered list with list items and you can easily say, please display none my list items except for the very first child. And what our carousel will do is, after the JavaScript is loaded, it will kind of rearrange the, the DOM structure, put the very first item in a sub uh, DOM node. And actually, what will happen is totally as we like to intend it. No jumping anymore. Maybe to this previous next, but uh, we didn't start those one. And we will see that, oh, oh, it's a nice slider. Oh, it's working. Get the idea? And that would be the very uh, take-home message for this one. Yeah, style if this if, if, as if there was no JavaScript present, and then we would see maybe no uh, no menu at all, but after the JavaScript is loaded, the menu comes in nice and slow like it's intended to. Uh, we wouldn't see probably the, the buttons here, but we now we wouldn't see this one either. Uh, but the, the icon or the, 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 the very iconic on this page would be on the very same position. It would not jump around like this. Um, maybe the images, if the images have the uh, correct width and height given, uh, the content below wouldn't jump. That's, that's something very important to note. So, uh, I did the slider. Hey! And I have like some couple minutes left. Uh, we did the background. We did actually uh, use the article teaser. And so I can back, go back. Any questions so far? No. Want to go a little bit further? Um, let me make a slider. Details page. Hmm. There was also something. Um, let's take the last two one. 
actually, um, when you are uh, developing for the front end, it's quite nice to have your details page here. Um, I will jump uh, uh, this one. I wanted to have the first one. Yes, um, just as a, just as an example, um, if you have normally a article, an article. Uh, you will give the possibility the content manager to style this article in certain cases. So he's maybe also able to put some uh, text in italics and he's also able to give something, a class of button. And that's actually something we are able to do here. So if I go for the background, if I edit this one, nope, sorry. Uh, if I edit this one, uh, you will see we've uh, enabled the content manager to, to give it a certain style. Everybody of you knows how to do this, right? Yes, okay. Um, but actually what is represented in the back end is not working. So, okay, I've gave this the, the, the class of, uh, of teaser, the, this paragraph the class of teaser, but it's not working, it's not helping. Actually, what you end up with is probably having a link. Okay, that's wonderful. It is also uh, set as a link button, but sometimes un uh, unintendedly the teaser paragraph will be uh, ap applied to this one as well, and in the back end you don't see any difference. Actually, that was a quite a bug for me uh, half a year ago, and I was trying how to fix this. You can actually, of course, override the styles that are in there, but how to do those? Uh, actually, I was like, doing my own backend theme, just extending seven, okay, mm, was not working. Uh, then I found out there is a hook for this, of course, working. Um, but this hook was only doing the front end, so I looked in the code itself and it was not. And actually, finally, the answer for this is very easy. If we go back to our very thematic info file, we will see I don't know if you know this, but there is actually a CK Editor style sheets uh, declaration. I used it from the beginning, but it was not working, unfortunately. And then, and then you can do this at your very, and so that's a little confusing, theme you are using for the front end, so that the back end editor, the content editor, uh, content editor for the back end is seeing uh, in the CK Editor this very styles. So if we go and apply those styles. By the way, I use this include here, so I can use it in the front end and the back end. So, and I have two different uh, CS, uh, SCSS files in my finally uh, CSS folder. I can uh, reference this one, and if everything goes smoothly, no, working, no, we will see. See this one. Yes, it's updated. Um, and if we refresh this page, it should be much more helpful for the front uh, content editor to see. Uh, I unfortunately put the wrong paragraph here to my link. I don't want the link to be in a teaser paragraph, but uh, okay, I can revert this. And actually, ah, okay, I see this one looks quite bigger, and that's my normal uh, normal text. Yeah, so that's also a takeaway home message for me. It's a very small detail, but it's very important. You, how, how much time do I have? Like ten minutes? I'm too fast. No. Wonderful. Um, actually, there are two more things I can show you if you like to. Yes. Okay. Be a little bit more en en enthusiastic about this. Okay. Uh, pardon. <laughs> Focused, okay. Then please stay sharp. Um, actually, there are two things I uh, wanted to show you, and one thing really struck me, and actually, I don't know, how, who of you managed to do this button? So you have an article, you have an overview page, and you want to go back to this very overview page. I don't want to go back to the very uh, sorting or the very uh, query I just made. I want, just wanted to go back to this overview page. Who of you hard-coded it in? <laughs> don't be shy. And what's the problem with this? At least if you have like a two-lingual site, you're gonna end up with a hard-coded uh, um, URL there. Ah, it does not work. Um, who of you came up with the idea to put a translated block at the very end of every article and then just translate this block and put a link in there? Okay, sorry. 
And <laughs> okay. The field widget? You can even easily go and say, okay, I just added another, another view mode, and this view mode only consists of the URL of my... Come on, guys, why not doing this? Um, actually, um, in Drupal 8 and even in um, Twig, there is a very nice thing called uh, yeah, the aliases, of course. And uh, it's, uh, of course, coming from uh, Symfony. And if you know your way around about that, it's very helpful. Actually, um, this very page just jumps back to the very front page. So if I hover that, you will see. Ah, okay, um, you will see it points to slash nodes. So that's the default. If you install, uh, it will have the root node. Uh, the the root node. Uh, normally, it would have like news site, news page, uh, projects over you. I don't know. So if you're not jumping back to the very front page, how do I find this so-called? Elias. So actually, if we go to the back end, if we do our tour back to the very views we are having, and if I go back correctly to this very node here, and if I try to make it a little bit more visible, you will see that on every view we will have this very machine name, and you can set this machine name. Um, but actually, this machine name will compose a certain Elias. But how do I get to this? Uh, Elias. Actually, uh, we have the views, view front page. Okay, that kind of tells me. Um, who of you uses the Drupal console? <laughs> yeah, some. Okay, hands up. Wonderful. Um, so actually, what you have to do is go to your actual uh, sites folder. Sorry, I uh, should have prepared this one. Yes, uh, theming demo. Yes, nope. And then I wanted to. Nope, go to thematic, I don't need this one. And Drupal, and actually there's a very nice um, way to find all those aliases. Uh, if you go for uh, routes debug, you will end up, if I type correctly, and it won't take that long, uh, route, routes, routes debug, yes, if I I'm so bad at typing, I would rather copy and paste Rupert Router debug. Uh, if I do this one, I will end up with a very, very long list, but actually uh, I wanted to go through this, this very path. I'm able to... Yes. <laughs> It's sometimes it's so easy, but it helps you a lot. Really, it really helps you a lot uh, because if you do translations, if you do path aliases, if you do path auto, and so on, um, it's very hard to get there. And actually, what we have only have to do is to do this. Uh, take this one. Um, there was a inner urge of me to uh, update this very uh, machine name, but actually, it's not that important. It helps you um, to see. Okay, that's a page. I can also say front page, front page node. News, news overview page. I, I don't know. These uh, machine names will be generated automatically, and you just stick to it. And what the only thing you have to do is, of course, uh, in your template, uh, in this very example of our article. In this case, I go to the very back. I will do this. So in Twig, you know, you have the path uh, function as well as the URL function, as well as a third. No. Yeah, yeah. Um, and if you hand over a alias there, it will automatically uh, go and convert it to the very URL. And the very difference between the very difference between the path and the URL function is path will always generate the relative path, and the URL will always generate the absolute path. So bear in mind, if you have any caching or something going on, moving uh, your site along, this will actually include HTTPS, whatever domain, subdomain you are. So um, if you are, in most cases, I believe you will use the path variable. And even if you try to, need, uh, try to go to a certain node with a node ID, you can do it like this. 
And as I just said, you don't have to type this one. Uh, this, very, uh, this very document you see here is on GitHub. Um, I can do one more thing. We still have like three minutes left. Thank you. Um, this, this thing is on GitHub. Um, um, I also did some screenshots and this very thematic theme I just said, uh, showed you is there as well. And one thing, please, please help me. Um, if there are anybody of you, um, who, who does not see SEO on this page? No, uh, that's a rhetorical question, of course. So if you're on your page and on a certain note, who of you realize knows about, if you look in the header, knows about these? What, what are those? So um, I'm here on my uh, local host, so I'm not logged in. And I still see the node ID. I see where I can delete it. I can, I can see how to edit it, actually. And what this will create is some very nasty logging. And if I have a look at our GitHub page, uh, you will end up with something like this in your loggings. So you will end up lots of access denied errors. Actually, we were realizing after some pages got live, what, what's going on? Are, are we hacked or something like? And slowly we realized now that's totally norm, a normal behavior because every um, site bot will, scroll, uh, will crawl our site and try to find all the links and try to find go to those links. And actually there is an issue about that. And please, since this issue is not updated like since uh, 30 days or, or more, um, please give your comment to this because uh, I don't know why the people are trying to keep this there. I don't know, this guy is doing it. Um, seeing it not, not as a real problem, but actually it is a real problem. Uh, it can be also, this one is like 30 days ago. Uh, it can really be a problem because your site gonna be, I don't know, directly, but on some search engines will do, downrank your site since this is a link showing to some access denied. Uh, actually, this will clutter your header. You don't want to have it. If you trans have a page that's translated, it will also show some links that are uh, sh showing you how to translate this very file. And so uh, it's really not needed there and really clutters your, uh, your logs. So it's sometimes, for us, it's even hard to see two hours in the past because our logs are so cluttered with those, all those access denied files. And that's very, very nasty. So please go there and uh, comment on this. And of course, there's a module for that. And uh, we just recently, it's it's very small one. It just takes uh, the uh, all those uh, information from the head. Uh, if you're not logged in, it will take them away. Actually, they are important because if you're on a backend, uh, Drupal knows from there, what to do, how to edit, and how to delete all those uh, revisions and so on. And yes, and actually we did it also ourselves. So I just added some more links there. So if you're on a translated page, this will also um, uh, remove the translation uh, related links there. Wow, I didn't thought I would go that far. But actually, I'm through with this. Any questions about this? Ah, no, no, please. Uh, for our sponsors, I have to say thank you. And you can clap now. And of course, I don't uh, bring you home, let you go until you don't, uh, uh, you repeat those take, take away home message. Uh, Pure CSS is like PHP without, with magic numbers and no functions at all. So please spread the words. We need SAS in core somehow, some other implementation. Please don't write pure CSS anymore. And the second one, of course, is the style of if there was no JavaScript yet. Because every time uh, your page loads, uh, there are uh, no caches at all. Your page will look ugly, jump around, and you will also get a uh, malus from uh, Google since your page is not fully uh, showing and so on. You see the repository. Hi, I'm Tassilo. Any questions, please shoot. Don't be shy.
So um, since nobody is, everybody is shy. Um, so if you have any idea about how to do this SaaS thing I just told you about, please come contact me. Uh, I'm glad to hear about it. Thank you. <laughs>